Hello everyone, welcome to this presentation called Real Measurements of 5G New Radio Sync. My name is Anand Ram from Calnex Solutions. So let's start with the importance of synchronization. Well, in 5G, as you may know, is a time domain technology, and any TDD technology has frame alignment, which is ultimately important, or time alignment of those frames. Synchronization determines the accuracy or correctness of those frame alignments, because if they're not aligned correctly, interference results. And of course, there are multiple scenarios where interference can come up. The first shown here is really interference between UE to UE, so the user equipment for 5G, one of them in downlink mode and one of them in uplink transmission can interfere with each other. Second scenario is where the G node Bs themselves interfere with each other, the G node B to G node Bs. And in fact, there are really four scenarios in total because you can take two more scenarios as a combination of these where the G node B is interfering with the UE or the UE is interfering with an adjacent G node B. But one of the interesting things about 5G is well that there is another source of interference called crosslink interference. And this is where two transmissions are happening with frames of slightly different formats. 5G allows for different frame structures or for frame formats or time slot formats to be used, primarily to provide flexibility in terms of how much of that bandwidth you use. For example, a simple illustration could be using more time slots for downlink than for uplink. And depending on how these are used and deployed, if the time slots or frame format differs between adjacent transmissions, they can actually interfere with each other because the alignment of the frames are different. There's another factor that is relevant when discussing interference with 5G, and that's really synchronization between operators. So in most mobile networks, operators are allocated frequencies, and they protect against using adjacent frequencies by usually employing guard bands. In 5G, they want to remove these guard bands. So here's an example here where three operators in allocated spectrum, and there's a 20 megahertz guard band between uh, each of those networks. However, with 5G and the demand to fully utilize that spectrum, uh, operators are pushing to remove, and they are removing that guard band. And as a result of this, we need to manage the interference between networks. And to avoid that interference, these operators must really synchronize to the same reference, for example, the national time reference in the country. And also importantly, they should really use the same frame structure in terms of the uh, pattern or time slot allocation of downlink and uplink frames. And this is actually the topic that's been covered by a GSMA publication in April 2020, which refers to the coexistence of multiple TDD networks and the fact that coordination will be required between networks in the country, or also international coordination of networks across borders. And multiple networks in either the same country or across borders potentially interfering with each other Really what it means is that it's important and vital now for these network operators to measure the signals from their own genome beat. Not just that, but also measure your network and the next network or adjacent networks or overlapping networks. Potentially also networks across national boundaries where networks spill over into national boundaries. We do need to measure those networks. And really the only practical way of measuring someone else's network or a network across a boundary is measuring the synchronization of that signal over the air. Before we do that, I'd also like to cover some topics of 5G influence synchronization in terms of the network architecture. So first of all, starting with the fundamental SIG requirement as specified by 3GPP, is that the phase synchronization accuracy measured at the antenna connectors shall be better than three microseconds. This is really a phase requirement, meaning it has to be within three microseconds of the other cell, and it's the same as 4G. So just showing this pictorially, when you have two G node Bs or two antennas, the phase alignment between them needs to be better than three microseconds. And in general, this is implemented as a time requirement to a central clock. So for example, a national time clock, if each of those base stations are within 1.5 microseconds of each other, then you are able to meet that three microsecond relative requirement. The ITUT specifies this in terms of a recommendation for the network or the end of the network to be within 1.5 microseconds of that common time reference. And this is mentioned in the G8271 recommendation. The other aspect of 5G relevant to synchronization is the evolving architecture of the network itself. 
first of all, the functional split of the DU, DU and RU, the centralized unit, distributed unit, and the remote radio unit, coupled with the disaggregation of the hardware and software in all of these platforms provides interesting new challenges. The first challenge, remember the end-to-end -end requirement here from a central time reference. We've just used an example where the central time reference is in the core of the network here. The end-to-end -end requirement is 1.5 microseconds. 1.1 microseconds or plus or minus 1.1 microseconds of that is allocated to the network right up to the point of the DU. So two interesting points here. One, you will see that there's only 0.4 microseconds or 400 nanoseconds of budget left between the DU and the RU or the antenna. And that could be a network in there, which is a pretty tight requirement for the network. And the other thing is there is also the possibility of RUs within a cluster having a tighter requirement to deploy coordination technologies. So we have tight synchronization requirements in 5G. We have this fun, same fundamental requirement as 4G. However, some new challenges in terms of potential sources of interference and the new architecture of the network and the evolving disaggregation or open platforms providing potentially new challenges as well. We talked about the importance of measuring synchronization. So what exactly do we measure? Well, the good thing about 5G or most radio technologies is the 5G has a synchronization signal block within the transmission. The SSB really carries the synchronization from the GNOD or the base station to the user equipment because the user equipment has to synchronize with the base station. So we can use this signal to measure the accuracy of time coming from the base station. These signals, the PSS and SSS, are 127 symbols wide. They're wider than 4G, really to provide better correlation and reliability, but they're longer and therefore a bit more challenging to measure them. They're also transmitted in bursts. There are multiple SSBs per burst, but also these, uh, these signals carry the physical cell ID. So when you measure them, you know which cell you're measuring. So first of all, synchronization is carried within the signal, and we can utilize this signal block. The other slight complication is with 4G, these sync signals were positioned around the central subcarrier, and it was the same for all cells, as shown in the top of this diagram. With 5G, they can be anywhere in the raster, and then also you can have multiple carriers or multiple signals for multiple beams. So it's a little bit more challenging to find these signals and to capture them and measure them, and here's how we do it. So we build a circuitry where we have a digital receiver receiving the signal. We then extract the I and Q samples, the I and Q data, and we timestamp them. We timestamp them against a reference, and that reference is usually locked to GNSS, usually stabilized with a rubidium. That outputs a 1 PPS, which is then used as the trigger to timestamp the I and Q data coming in. We then process that data to find the PSS, SSS, cell ID, and calculate the time to the start of the frame. This is fundamental circuitry that allows us to measure 5G synchronization by effectively timestamping the SSB message or the, or the IQ data within them. And here's some real measurements made in controlled lab environments. The measurement on the left is from a lab in the US uh, where we had a constant time error of about 300 nanoseconds with a variation in the measurement period of 1,000 seconds of about 33 nanoseconds. And again, on the right-hand side, this is from a lab in the UK where a 5G signal was measured with constant time error of 142 nanoseconds over just short of an hour. The variation was about 74 nanoseconds. Again, both of these measurements would be well within the specifications required and would be classified as good or passed. But once again, these controlled measurements in the lab environment, we hope to expand on this work by doing more measurements out mm -hmm. in the field. So just in conclusion, 5G has strong requirements to measure signal. Why? We need to validate the TDD synchronization for interference management because there are lots of sources of interference. And also with the removal of guard bands, we need to validate synchronization for interference management between networks, either in the same country or across boundaries. Coupled with that, the only practical way to measure things like small cells is really to do a measurement over the air because small cells are small devices that have no other measurement point. So measuring somebody else's network in a different country or measuring a sync of small cells requires you to measure over the air. The signals in 5G, the SSB, provide a way of doing this. And of course, you know, operators should plan to measure the timing of these relative to GNSS and from one base station to another and CalNex is working on the ability for operators to be able to do that.